because enjoy the common experience of an unboxing day with friends from around the globe and we are truly just here to be ourselves fully and I do have an acronym for that uh, which is find your tribe such as what we're doing today and we've got understand what's yours for the energies in motion that show up that need to be dealt with and it's our responsibility, the ability to respond for us to distribute those energies in ways that will benefit us. We have love what arises. And in that moment, there is a shift and movement that takes place in the cameras because that's what's required when the energies in motion show up. We have to be the ones that actually see it, feel it, and then choose how we're going to distribute our energy from here and then let go of our attachment to the not now. And there is a phenomenal book, The Game of Quantum Syntax Grammar, uh, which sounds pretty heady and it is, but I did read the, the final section a, few, a couple weeks ago. Um, it's on ultimate jurisdiction. And I really love the title of this story, which is Internal Contracts, The Problem with the Human Mind. So this is a really highly recommended chapter that I will put a link to in the replay so that those who watch back and those who are present can check out the story of how we are either in regret when we're in the past or we're in anxiety when we're in a future that is not here. And this is where all of our power fully is, which is why to be fully present is to bring a yes, let's into our experience so that regardless of what's showing up we can say yes let's and instead of either or and we can shift in our own selves the ability to actually say yes to opportunities that show up if they resonate if they feel right for us and so that's why our intuition being the teacher our soul hired ahead of time as a guide is so important for us to really understand how our intuition speaks to us and neil actually i saw on facebook or on our Inst our telegram uh peaceful inner warriors united assembly group you had actually shared a really awesome video about intuition if you want to just take a couple minutes to speak into that neil um i've shared so many different videos i'm not sure which one you're talking about that's okay. the one that i one that i did or one yeah i think I it was shared? in relation to the wim hof breathing techniques that you've been practicing for the last month or two and yeah, activating the pineal gland yeah an, an awful lot of uh breathing exercises when we breathe in air, we breathe in more than what we think we breathe in. We bring in part of the ether. And when we bring that in, that extends into the energy body in our Merkaba. Mm -hmm. So a deep breathing exercise does a whole lot more than what science knows that it does at this time. That comes from my metaphysical uh, research and training and background. So when you take a deep breath and you hold it for as long as you can comfortably and exhale slowly, you do that a number of times and you'll find that your pineal gland will be charged and you will feel um, a very strong peace with it. That's the exercise that I've grown up with using for breathing and that's take a deep breath, hold it as long as you can comfortably, exhale slowly and do that about a dozen times. Uh, the Wim Hof, it, it goes through the uh, more of a aggressive approach where you uh, deep breathe lots of times. I think they go 30 deep breath and you exhale and no holding of the breath until after the 30, then you exhale and hold it with empty lungs. It was a totally different uh, process, but both of them will uh, stimulate the pineal gland. Um, the Wim Hof, I find it gives you a little bit more of an aggressive energy approach to it. But if you just hold it, uh, that's with the empty lungs, right? The Wim Hof. Mm -hmm. But when you do it with the way I grew up with, uh, it's much more peaceful. Um, so I use both now. I'm, I've been doing the Wim Hof every day, uh, but hell, 
I bet it'd been close to 20 years where I did the, the deep breathing and holding it as long as you can comfortable. I, I did that for about 20 years. So both of those breathing exercises will stimulate the pineal gland. And when the pineal gland opens, we start to tap into our higher self, our spirit warrior within. And uh, it's, a, it's a process that continues to expand. You think that you're getting it. And it's a hilarious, hilarious thing in the growing of this because uh, what happens is, is as we grow and we become accustomed to um, our expanded selves, we think that we've got it, but it never ends. It never ends. It just gets more expansion and more expansion and more expansion. So any exercise that you do along that line, I encourage everybody to do it. It's good to see your face, Robin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. And and they speak about awareness as like a spiral staircase. So like Neil says, it's a constant expansion. And every time we get to a new level, then we meet the new devil and the new neighbors and the higher rent and the better views because now we're up at a higher level within the high rise of our own selves. Our own awareness is like, we're in the same spot, not a tremendous amount has changed, but we feel like we're completely different. And then we have to catch up with the growth that we've went through. And even the word breath itself, if you actually break it into two, you see birth starts it and death ends it. Just like our breath is the first thing we do, the last thing we do and everything the only consistent thing that we do the entire time we're here in between. Our breath is literally part of how we reconnect with this present now moment, which is where our power is. Like in this book, it talks about how the future is a fiction, the past is a fiction, this present now moment is the only one that truly exists. The true lie is that now is all that there is. And right now there's been a reordering of those letters for the agendas at play with the new orderly or with the new world order and whatnot, right? But as you may have heard me share before, I believe we need to take the letters back in their rightful place and create the new orderly world together, which is why we've got album 22.2, which is how we're harmonizing humanity with the music that we're putting out. It's why I am actually daily reading Joyriding the Universe, which is a book that was lent to me by a man I greatly respect. And so I'm reading that every day until it's through as my way of really just staying front of mind in terms of adding better ideas into my existing system and understand I have to stretch and catch up with all of the growth that takes place. And the beautiful thing about words when we see how they are the boxes that keep us feeling safely separate from one another and ourselves is that when we add new words into our vocabulary, then the boxes that we live in change. And so our vocabulary literally is part of the armor that we have to reconstruct the reality that is realistic evidence appearing legit in tomorrow's yesterday, which is what now words. is. So if we take words all of power. that together, pardon? I say words have power. There's no question about it. They have power and they go beyond what we um, know in our intellectual selves. One more thing on the breath. I think it's important to, to uh, know this. And Robin, you just experienced it. You'll, you'll feel that the energy, our soul, our soul personality, that part of us that's from the divine enters the body on first breath. And when you watch a baby being born, I watch my two girls being born. And uh, when my oldest girl was um, not quite coming out yet, I felt up in the corner of the room behind me, I felt a presence and I watched her come out. And when a baby comes out, they almost look like a cadaver. They've got a bluish color and they don't actually look like they're a living, breathing body until they have that first breath. And when she had the first breath, boom, I felt the energy come from the corner of the room and boom, boom, and phew, the baby was full color as normal and people watching somebody pass away it's much the same they'll take a deep breath 
and they'll see a living body in front of them. And when they exhale and they pass, the spirit of the soul, uh, that part of the divine that's in part of the body that's connected to source will leave. So I feel that's very important to understand when you're, when you're working with breath, because it's all part of the ether and the ether is real. It's, it's a, it's an absolute real thing. It's, it's, it's unlimited potential, unlimited potential. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Absolutely. That, that's, that's what all of it is. And we're either living at possibility or we're living in limitation, which is why understanding, standing under who we truly are and whose we truly are is so fundamentally important. And you guys have seen this. <laughs> I added, I added, I added some questions that I was going to be asking when uh, I went in. Is this the court of record? Like when I went in for my uh, for my hearing, which the judge hasn't shown up for the last two hearings because they're all on notice in their private capacity and when you had said the word personality um i forget who it is i believe that it is um not bruce lipton uh dr joe dispenza actually says personality is our personal reality which makes sense so if we think that we are a culmination of all that we have went through before now then we are limited by what we've believed ourselves capable of up until this point whereas our future will be a reflection of what we believe is possible now so let the past be used as context for where we were within the spiral staircase of awareness before now and then let us call ourselves present to create a future that has us standing higher in the hierarchy. So there are two um, different uh, di di diagrams here that are significant and you've seen both of them before, but this one up here is the hierarchy of motivational needs. So at the very top, you've got self-actualization, which is the highest expression of ourselves where we actually do what we came here to be. We're actually doing it, we're having it, we're experiencing it, we're being it. And that is a reflection of respect. So for anybody else that had an experience of not being included within your tribe of origins or within groups that you thought you were more important to than you found out you were in the end, that is a problem until we really get to the place of respect in the hierarchy. And then we start respecting ourselves more than what we're expecting others to give to us to let us know that we are worthy of. So instead of the external validation, we start going inward because it comes after belonging in the hierarchy of needs. So contribution, connection, well, contribution is the equivalent of self-actualization. We can only share what we've been through, right? We can, from a, from a lived experience, that's where our wisdom comes from, because wisdom is when we take the knowledge and then actually live it, and then we have an experience to share or a story. But when we're still at the level of belonging, we're not at respect or contribution just yet. And underneath of belonging is safety. So that whole culture, the cult you are, that right now is all about stay safe and, you know, why not stay healthy? You know, why not something that's actually going to support us rather than be focused on the lower spheres of survival instead of thrival within the hierarchy. And that's really where we need to get to. And then this hierarchy is more in relation to the law with God on top, man or woman under God, because we were created in his, her, its likeness and image. So we are the individuated expressions of the grand overall designer that is here to experience itself through us so we are gods and goddesses incarnate without that meaning to offend anybody though if you do choose to be offended that is your choice and you're welcome to it uh, just ask yourself how it's going to serve you and whether that's a pattern that you wish to carry on with you and if it is by all means inquire further as to why you would choose a limitation why would you choose to limit yourself emotionally to things that you don't have control over, which is what I say. So you can be offended by it, or you can say, all right, that 
how does that fit? How does that sit? And what am I going to do with that information? And then choose from there. Rather than being offended at what was said, just see how it fits. And if it doesn't, leave it. But if you get upset or offended at what I say because it doesn't resonate for you in your world, recognize you're actually holding on to it because by being angry about it, you're in a past moment that you don't have any control over. I can't control what was said then either. So neither of us are powerful back there. We're both very powerful when we're here fully present in this now. So just ask yourself if anytime you find yourself getting offended, whether it's by me or whether you just reflect on this calm, this teaching or this, this perspective, so that then you can create a new view where you are and then choose something that will serve you better. Because right now, what we're experiencing is the lower section of this hierarchy is actually the part that was designed to make life easier for us. So we have a de jure government until it became de facto. What does de facto government though mean? It means one with inherited rule, one who has assumed rulership or ownership, possession of all that falls under it. So Zoom, for instance, is the account that I'm using for this meeting in this moment. I have a Zoom account in order to play in this virtual reality, as do each of those who are present. And then you who watch this back on YouTube have a YouTube account. So those are your public interfaces. Our person is a public interface. Our driver's license is a public interface. Our tax status is a public interface. Our private medical status is a private interface. All of these statuses come with rules, obligations, duties, liabilities, and limitations. And the reason it's de facto government is because it's all connected to the Vatican, which is where the state and governance and religion all merged into one blaspheming experience that we have been culturally conditioned to see as normal. But what is normal is not necessarily natural. And that's what we really have to get back to because de facto government so yes, that is the crown, which is the bar, which is why baritry is what's going on right now, where the lawyers, not lawyers, there is no such thing as a lawyer, that's just a status. It is a man or woman acting in the position of a lawyer that is part of upholding this de facto governance because every lawyer is only able to represent our public status, which means they cannot stand for a man or woman. They can only represent a man or a woman in their jurisdiction, which is their law and their diction, which put together means you have to then comply with the rules, obligations, duties, debts, and obligations. But when we actually re maintain our standing as men and women, we can actually create the de jure government, the court of today, that is based on what we have to say. And that's what we're needing to move towards. I do believe that is what 2020 will have us step into more fully. Because what we can do when we correct our proper standing as a man or woman, understanding that men and women stand on feet and legs, a status is only a fiction that the man or woman stands underneath, which is why our reputation has been what is used to control and make sure we stay at the level of belonging rather than respect. So the other thing about the de facto government, I was trying to find out from the man that helps me with understanding what I do where the law is concerned. And yes, there are others too. But when I was trying to explain this whole concept of a de facto government, government, because we all know right now what's going on is not okay, it's completely corrupt. And anybody that speaks out against it gets de deemed an OPCA litigant, organized pseudo legal commercial argument litigant that then can be clumped underneath the Freeman of the land argument or common law or all of these nonsensical approaches to self-advocacy. Well, what if we instead understood that the greatest thing that we could do is stand as we always were, as a man or woman? What if we corrected our proper standing to reserve all rights that are under the unwritten rule of law, the common law, and then we actually advocate for our ability to do so by actually shifting into a private lifestyle, which is what it is. There is no one and done process in order to really step into our empowerment. It truly is a process of correcting your status one item at a time. 
So your tax status, for instance, could be one of the things that you might want to work with, given that income tax under the Income Tax Act, Act, which is uh, seen in a play, um, but the Income Tax Act actually was meant to expire with the War Measures Act back in the 60s. It's just they didn't stop charging tax and so we continued to pay it and we grew up in a system where you just are a taxpayer what are the only things that are certain in this life well death and taxes they say but what if both were actually illusions that we have given our power to and that death the only reason that it comes when it does is because we don't treat the vessel well enough which is why today i'm going to be reading chapter three of joy riding the universe and it is about the body as was yesterday's chapter so we'll get into that but the thing about the de facto government is that once you actually claim the right to be a man or woman in your private capacity with all rights reserved at all times when you correct your standing and, and, and claim your right to be lawfully self-governing, when someone else tries to say that you don't have the right that you do, or that you need a lawyer to, uh, to notarize what you're saying, what you're agreeing to by having a fiction notarize what you, the man or woman says, is that your word is not your bond, which means that you're opening a you're opening the door for a legal fiction to come into your reality which takes you out of now that's why all of my charges are in a not now moment because that's fiction the now is where our power is and the courts know that so they keep it out of the now so when they reserved me or they resummoned my person which you can only summon the debt right and all i did was speak at a rally i was lawfully in my private capacity as a woman i showed up only because I was told to go at three o'clock in the morning, I knew I needed to go to the rally and I needed to see if I could speak. So I did. And then when I got there, I went to the front and I said, who's organizing this? And I happened to be speaking to the man that was. And I said, oh, OK, well, I would love to be able to contribute. I feel like it's an important time for us to drop the walls on all of the boxes that have kept us safely separate from one another up until now. I've got Peaceful Inner Warriors United, which is my effort to really help people go inward. And I would love to have more locals be able to understand how to do that, because if we don't know how to go within, we will go without. And in the times that are coming, that inward journey is more important than ever the tools that we create we use to create inner resilience are going to be what keep us afloat when our statuses collapse when the public sphere collapses and the reputations the statuses the bank accounts that are based on fiat currency which has one line in the dollar not two two lines in a dollar as we were taught in school is lawful money one line is based on fiat, which is not backed with anything. So that's everybody is trading everything right now in order to get dollar signs that are backed by nothing other than their trust. And we have trusts, which is what we were incorporated with when our individual essence was then packaged under a personage that dropped us into the public. And then we thought that we needed to become more. And in the four and a half years while writing the transformation of self image through the hero's journey from a sacred perspective, which I've called the sacred sojourn of the soul. The crazy thing is that that whole journey brought me back to where I started knowing it for the first time because finally I knew that I didn't need to become more. The call isn't for more things. The call is for more awareness. The call is for more presence. The call is the remembrance of who we were the entire time. As a woman, I'm powerful. As a status, I can lose that in an instant because it was never mine. Zoom can take away my account and say that I haven't been following the rules of their platform and then it's gone and you don't have me there anymore, but I'm still here. What do you mean I'm not who I was? I always was here. But that's the thing about statuses. So when we actually get back to what de facto government means, it means someone else put themselves under or they, they put themselves over us and assumed governance. And until we correct our standing, we are only the status that falls under their jurisdiction. And that's why it's so important to actually get to this point 
to know the difference between a standing as a man or a woman in our private capacity with all rights reserved compared to a status that has us acting as if we are something that can be taken away because it's in the public and we don't have a full say there. But in our private, we absolutely do if we claim the right to. So de facto government is where the corporations begin and the incorporations of us into the body corporeal or the corporeal body, which is the corporate body, which is how we as individuals get lumped under group think. But as long as it's convenient group think it's okay. But as soon as it's an alternative group think, countercultural or part of a resistance, what if we understood that resistance in and of itself is actually not the way that we win this? It's like Neil's video that he had done. It's not about just holding the line. It's about moving the line. Like we are the ones that need to move because if we stop moving from a momentum perspective, have you ever been like running with, with the wave? For instance, like you're running out into the water and Robin, you you guys are in, in uh, Mexico right now. So it's like, you're running into the water and it's like, you got a wave coming. So you're moving, you're moving opposite the wave, right? You're trying to get into that wave. You're really excited to meet that wave. And then all of a sudden you stop, the wave hits you and what happens? you yeah. fall over if you stop moving when you get hit by the wave. But if you carry on moving into the wave that is moving at you, whew, you break through and become like the bison or the buffalo, which did you know, those are the only animals that actually run into a storm. All the other animals run away from it. But the buffalo and the bison, which are also symbolically animals about abundance, those animals run into the storm's eye because they understand that if they run away from it, they will be chased. Whereas if they run into it, the light is already following that storm and it's there when you meet it in the fully present moment now. So that is a long way of saying that when we actually correct our standing as men and women, then we have de facto government because we've claimed the right to lawfully self-govern, which means that under common law, we don't harm anyone. We keep the peace. We don't cause harm or loss and we don't commit fraud. Those are the tenets of a common law life by the unwritten standard. Don't hurt anybody else, keep the peace, don't commit fraud and don't commit harm or loss, easy unless you're working for a corporation that would have you act on behalf of a corpse. So the corporation is the private sector of the public domain. So we step out of our private into a lower jurisdiction because now we're an employee instead of a man or woman working. So when we understand that we can stay a man or woman as a verb doing the thing that is in the public, that the public would have us drop our standing into another title to become, that's how part of how we claim our rights. We don't consent to being an employee, we just are a man or woman employed. And that is a different experience altogether. When we understand how to articulate what we're doing instead of who we are because of what we do. That is a very different proposition from a self-image perspective, which is the journey we're going to go in or go on in the new year. And the public, courts, cops, councils, those are what uphold the legislation, which are the rules of the government. So when we understand the public domain was created to serve us, and because we have a de facto government at the helm, which is the one that we don't actually know is the rule, they are ultimately imposing rules onto us and dropping us into our statuses and getting us used to communicating in terms of our statuses. So think about right now, culturally, what's been going on. Social distancing instead of physical distancing. I caught that one right away, that it was teaching about being afraid of social rather than physical, because if it was about physical distancing, it would have been called that in the beginning. Everything is very strategic, including the fact that right now we're to share our private medical status. Well, what does that mean? If we are a status, we have already dropped our standing into 
being that which someone asks us what we are. And what I say when anyone asks that question is I do not share my private medical information publicly, nor do I consent to being deemed a status. I am a woman standing in my private capacity with all rights reserved at all times. Thank you very much. I do not play your game. No, I'm standing. You can status all you want. And when you're ready to be real, come and stand with me. But if you want a status, statuses are over in a make-believe reality that you have given all your power to, which means when the make-believe reality no longer exists the way that you have come to see yourself to belong in it, when it falls, I'm still standing. And I'm going to keep standing over here with other men and women that are willing to stand with me. And I believe that's how we take our power back. When we stop acting on behalf of the corpse and we put the energy we used to give to a dead and lifeless entity, which is what a corporation is, corporate entity, all of these words, they're right there for us. If we look at them, what is an entity? An energy field. It's a thought form that gathers energy when energy is given to it. Just like with the holiday that just passed. I didn't even put up a tree this year because I heard about Satan Claus and those who worship Saturn and the fact that the pine tree represents the pineal gland and the spine of the tree that we bow to, to give gifts to, offerings of our energy, then become what is extracted when we think it was just the gift, but it was all the energy that we put into getting that gift to the pineal gland where Satan is able to steal our energy. Woo, <laughs> right? That's a different view that isn't very popular that I'm still coming to terms with. And that's part of the reason that I'm reading Joy Riding, the universe, because Christmas isn't fun to me anymore. Christ mass, <clears throat> like I kind of look at the word Jesus as being just sweet without the I. So we idolize him forgetting that it's the H-Y-M-N of the universal one song. And then look outside when the man himself, his name wasn't even Jesus when he was alive. His name was Yeshua. And then after he died and was against any kind of indoctrination of religions or lawyers, and he was the very one that kicked the lawyers out of the, out of the priests or out, out of the churches, he was the one that stood up against all of that. And so what's the best way to blaspheme his life's message? Create a religion around him. And they get you to idolize him. And then put all your power into the savior that's coming. Save I or. I or what? Which goes back to the beginning when it was about not either or, but a yes and. How do we shift out of looking at what exists and thinking that this is the reality? when it's only the reality because we've given it our energy. And when we sign on behalf of it, we give it our life. Brewster, do you have something you wanna add in? No? I was just leaning forward. <laughs> looking forward? Le looking forward, yeah. No, no, no yeah. leaning forward, leaning forward. Yeah, just look, look. Yeah, it's not as clear as what it will be in the new year when I kind of break it down in a, more legible way which i'm going to be doing as we kind of play more uh together but i just wanted to bring that awareness into today's meeting to say it is time for us to see where in the hierarchy we are living our lives how that is serving us and then what we're going to do moving forward from here because we do get to choose and that's the whole point of standing instead of just statusing it's not about why we're showing up, what we're showing up to get, which actually makes me feel like listening to this song called Freedom is the way that we best, huh, there was a problem playing our audio file. I've got it a, another way. I'm just downloading it now. Um, Robin had sent that over uh, right before we actually got on here. And so freedom, I feel like, is a great way for us to kind of let this information simmer and soak. So I want to play freedom because I do believe that that is what 2022 can be for us. 
And so if we actually are willing to give it some space and some time to think about what freedom actually means to us, and we can move with that, I think that that's a great way to start moving ourselves out of the boxes. Neil? I just want to add something to this because it all blends in. The Great Awakening. So many people have a, a confusion of what that really is. There's two things happening. We're becoming aware of all of the corruption and the way we've been um, controlled and our rights have been removed from us. So that's an awareness. But the awakening is all about self-empowering. We're becoming more in tune with who we really are. And it, common law does uh, do that. It reestablishes our power within each man and woman. But there's more to it than that because it's our spiritual part. It's the spiritual growth that's going to be so dynamic and all-encompassing. Jesus's life was interesting because he was here to show us the way. He wasn't here to do it for us. We're going to save ourselves. So it's you and I, we've been waiting for someone or something to come and save us. It's not going to happen. We have to save ourselves. And this whole awakening is is bringing back the power into our own hearts and bringing back the power of the source energy of who we really are. It's all self-empowering. So this whole journey of awakening is so much more than so many people understand it to be. They think it's all about just being aware of the corruption and taking care of it. That's only just the surface. That's the visual part of it. The absolute part is we are becoming more. We are re, uh, remembering. That's re-dash membering. So we are connecting with our higher selves. We're connecting to, to parts of our spiritual being that has been lying dormant for centuries. So we're reconnecting. It's remembering. I think that kind of adds to the whole thing. So in common law is a big part of it because we're establishing our, our standing uh, with God as our right to be here, whatever you want to call them. We are all here for that. So I, I think that with this journey of awakening, as we become self-empowered and more aware, see Moses come out with, um, I think it was Moses that had the Ten Commandments. Mm. Jesus' life was simplified. It was two commandments, only two. Love one another and bear each other's burdens. Mm. There's one more book I'm going to re recommend. I'll post it in the... Uh, Laura's channel, and that is um, Freedom from the Human Condition by Jeremy Griffith. And the process that was studied to go through that, he studied Plato for like 45 years. And uh, some scientists were um, looking for what's really going on on the planet. The real problem is, is we've lost our ability to connect with each other and bear each other's burdens so we've lost a, a major part of the the reason we're here as social beings and we know that the the evil ones want to stifle our spiritual growth that's not going to happen light has already won but we've got a number of years ahead for us to go through where what we're going to be doing now the weeds have been exposed i call it pulling the weeds in the garden of gaia and uh it's, these are absolutely crazy times, but they're the most beautiful times that we could ever imagine because light is one and we're pulling the weeds and we're reestablishing, re-dash membering who we really are. Okay. Grateful that you are here. Thank you. Thank you for that share. And Robin, Bruiser, Sean, Leslie, you guys, I'm so grateful you showed up today. And I, I really hope that you've gotten fuel for your soul from this meeting. And if anyone would like to share anything uh, before we play mm -hmm. Robin's song, Freedom, I would love for you to know that the floor is open and the intention is we'll listen to Robin's song 
And then what I would like to do is actually read the consciousness of the body, which is 15 pages. Um, so you don't have to stay for that reading unless you would like to. Um, but I'd like to read that after uh, we listen to Robin's song and we can close out this meeting and then have a part two, so to speak. Um, but I definitely want to make sure that that reading is there. You know that you're welcome to stay and uh, what we'll do is we'll just play this amazing song, which is going to be part of album 22.2 and I'm so excited. and Mama Robin, who made the song Freedom and the little creation in her arms too. Bruiser, take it away. Oh, I was gonna, I was gonna wait until you were. It's your, your turn. 
Oh, it's my turn. All right. <laughs> well, I, I do have something I want to say. Um, going, um, taking off of what Neil just said about the Great Awakening. Um, with the people, the people, with the people um, I follow, and I follow like what's like happening behind the scenes. You know, you know at least what they can, what they can talk about. But what Neil, what Neil said. You know, I take that to what the stuff I've been, I've been hearing. And, you know, what I take from that is, you know, all, all this, all this stuff that's taking place behind the, she the scenes to help us in creating a better world, you know, like the Nassar Gassara, I'm, and, uh, you know, and, and going, and going back to common law. All, all of that are tools to help us in that awakening. However, it, what, what makes sense with what Neil said is, even with all this stuff taking that's going to be taking place in the coming years, not, not everyone, and, he, and, and even with, like, from what I heard about the re-education that's going to happen, not everyone it's still it's still going to be awakened by this because to truly be awakening to truly be awakened it's not it's not a matter of of getting the tools to help you out it's a matter of actually use actually using the tools and actually take taking the time to really to, to learn what re what really is to learn what really is right in our world and not and to and to start unlearning what they have learned there's there was a great video um Max Eigen I think was doing the uh speaking here or Max e Egan, um, however you pronounce it. And he said something very interesting and, and what makes sense is about 30% of us are already awake. About 30% of us are never gonna awaken from this. And then there's about 40% that are like, that, that are like in the middle, like, like on the fence. Can I say something? Oh, I'm sorry. What was that? Can I say something? Yeah. So it's videos like this one. Thank goodness this was recorded because I was literally on the verge of tears a lot of the time through listening to Laura speak um, and and explaining just how just how tricked we've been and um, mm. when you when you express it and you share that information and knowledge from a loving place like Laura is doing. And now we've all jumped on this Zoom with her and now we can help her spread this incredibly powerful information. And so we can't, we can't really worry about or um, uh, concern ourselves with who's going to and who's not going to because like I said, like Laura's been saying, we don't have control over that information. We don't have control over that outcome, right? All we have control of is of this now moment. And in this now moment, Laura, we're all gaining incredible knowledge to share. And we just keep doing that in every now moment. And who knows, maybe the whole world will wake up. Maybe it'll take 20 years. Do you know what I mean? And the evolution of life will continue and people will continue to die and babies will continue to be born. <laughs> right because this little one she's only a month old and i am honored and privileged to be the one to educate her on the things that need to be learned right going forward to create a better world and to go back to our standing our proper standing as humans men and women so as children continue to be born as people continue to die um, who knows? Maybe in 20 years we will all be wakened and dancing around fires. 
I don't know, but all we have control of is right now and what we're doing. And Laura, the information that you're trying to share is insane. And I'm just so proud to be part of it. And I'm gonna do everything I can to help you. Thank you, thank you both. I'm, I'm so grateful and I'm so grateful for your song. It's beautiful. It <laughs> represents what this is all about. And I just, I'm so grateful that you've got <laughs> such incredible men and women and babies in this space right now. Thank you. <laughs> Bruiser, were you complete or did you have- I didn't, I didn't mean to cut you off Bruiser at all. I, I wanted to hear everything you were saying. I just wanted to add, that's all. Yeah, yeah, no, no, that's perfectly all right. Um, yeah, I think I was just, yeah, I think, uh, trying to think if there was anything else. Um, yeah, just the main point is, you know, we can get the tools, but we still have to use them. We still have to, we still have to build ourselves to the to the point where, where we're actually, where we're actually using this for, for the for the good, uh, for the good of the world, the good of others, the good of, the good of ourselves. You know, the good of everything. So, here's the beautiful yeah. thing. Here, here's the beautiful thing. We're not actually going to be building ourselves. We're reconnecting. We're re-membering who we really are. Um, John 14, 10 through 12. I'm not a big Bible thumper, but that's a beautiful verse. And it says, why do you marvel at the works that I do? There will be others come to do more. And he always said, I speak not of myself, but of the Father that's in me. I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, and I am in you. Which means that that creative source, that power of this creative source is inside everybody. And everything that Jesus did in miracles, we all are capable of. Going back to the breath, I'm going to give you, show you a quick exercise. I, I encourage you all to do it. Take a pitcher of water, one pitcher of water. I'll use my coffee pot. Have two glasses and fill both glasses up. And take the one glass and hold it like this. And hold it in front of you. And take a deep breath and hold it and gaze into the water. And do that about 12 to 14 times. Hold your breath, exhale slowly just gazing into the water and then taste and notice the texture of the water that you just charged and then take the other glass to come out of the same pitcher and taste it and notice the flavor and the texture and i absolutely guarantee that the water that you charged will have a different texture and flavor and or flavor the the more pure the water the the less um, noticeable uh, the changes are. They're subtle nuances. Don't look for a big change. It's not like it's going to be all of a sudden it's going to taste like an orange juice or something. It's not dramatic. It's very subtle. So you notice the texture and the flavor after you've breathed and holding it in front of you like that, gazing down into it. Do that a deep breath. Hold it as long as you can comfortably and the energy from your fingers is charging the water. That's the healing hands. If you have a, have a glass of that and then go to bed, chances are you're going to toss and turn and not be able to go back to sleep. But if you have it two hours before you go to bed, chances are you'll have a greater ability to recall dreams. And so that's proof that the energy is flowing from your fingers. You're proof in just the fact that you've changed the texture and the flavor of the water. And uh, so that's the healing hands. So there's so much that's going on that's absolutely astounding and absolutely beautiful in these times. So, um, oh, phone's ringing. So you guys, uh, I'm going to boogie now. And uh, thanks for inviting me to this, Laura. Thank you, Neil. It was great to And I wish you all peace profound in the new year. Amazing. I love that the call literally comes in, in that moment as we're each called to really do what we came here for. 
to really come here to be the change we seek in this world, to remember what we're here for, our unique calling in this world, the contribution that we can uniquely make, and then how to embody a new energetic signature by integrating all that we went through when going through the valley of transformation that requires us surrender the life we had before in order to make space for the life that we are creating now. And I have tears of gratitude from being as part of this experience with each of you. Truly, my heart is just absolutely touched. And what was funny when Neil was sharing the the glass the the glass charging when he had put it forward so it was flat and then it was just like yeah it's like the care bear it's just like you might flip tip tip it over but it's just like if we become like care bears and then let that energy be what we send into this world so that we can bless those that come into our reality we become the ripple effect it's just like when a drop of water goes into a into a body of water there's a big ripple that comes out from that and we can be that ripple effect in the lives of those that don't have access to this information outside of you or me like each of us are called to take what this message means to us what it means for us and what we're going to do with it in order to actually do something with it to make this part of our lifestyle so I would really encourage you to just take some time to think about the biggest lesson that you got from this experience this morning. And I appreciate your time together today. I appreciate you for showing up and supporting me in this call and supporting one another in this call and having a space where we can have conscious conversation the way that we have this morning and we'll be doing more of because it's required and it's how we really be what we're here for and up level our own vibe while we do the same for the tribe that we're creating because we're coming together and so i want to get into reading joy riding the universe uh, but i want to give anybody an opportunity that may not uh, be able to stay it's 15 pages so it might take probably about 45 minutes or so uh, to read over so Keep doing what you're doing. Rock on, Sean. We appreciate you very much. And uh, it's just amazing to be on this journey with others that are in their own walk and process. So Neil's ordeals right now that are empowering themselves. If that is the case where you've got a particular situation, I don't want to have answers, but I promise to do my best to see how we might be able to not add my situation, uh, but to at least point you in the direction of what you may be able to help support and serve you. Uh, so thanks again. We'll continue to follow you on this journey with you. Brilliant, Leslie. It was awesome to have you here too. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And what you hear in the background as well, the music that is playing that played after Robin's song Freedom is actually called the Triad Wave. Uh, so it's by Steve Rudler is the version that I is actually of the heart wave frequency. So the triad wave is really a way to calm the nervous system so that we can receive higher information in a way that we don't really feel safe. Because if our nervous system is settled, then we're not going to be so reactive, which is when the letters of creative are reversed, right? We're not reversed in their specific order, but creative and reactive are the same letters. And so if our nervous system is triggered, then basically we're in fight, flight, freeze, fawn mode. And if our nervous system is settled and soothed, then we are able to be present, we're able to observe, and then we can actually make an informed decision at that point. So I hope that serves you too. And uh, unless anybody has any final words, the audio is fading. So. to the mix and that 
is how we have such an incredible infusion of joy and energy and all that each of us brought. So thank you. Look forward to having little baby freedom in the midst.